Welcome to this video on finding and narrowing a research topic. In this video, we'll go over some library resources and basic steps to help find engaging topics and then narrow them down for an effective research project. These steps include using resources like databases to browse and find information to brainstorm about possible topics. Use databases or other tools to find out what's current and what people are talking about in your topic. Using resources to find out background information so that you're familiar with the important people, places, and themes in your topic. And then finally, we want to use all of this information to reframe our topic as a critical question. And we'll talk about all these steps in more detail as we move along. So one place that you can go to start with that first step of browsing for topics is the Phoenix Col College Library homepage. If I scroll down, you'll notice there's a link here for databases. When I click on that link, I'll get a menu like this of over 100 databases that Phoenix College Library subscribes to and are free to you if you're a student, faculty member, or staff member at Phoenix College. A number of these databases can, may be helpful for your research, and I'll make another video to explain some of those, but I want to focus on one in particular for this video. It's called Opposing Viewpoints, and it will help you to browse for topics to narrow down topics and to figure out what people are discussing in your topic. When you click on the link to open Opposing Viewpoints, you'll be prompted to log in with your MEID and password. And once you do, you'll come to the home page like this. Now, if you have an idea of what you'd like to do for your topic, you can always search it. But if you're not quite sure, the best place to get started is to go to Browse Issues. When I click on Browse Issues, it will give me a long list of possible topics. Now you probably don't want to look at this whole list. You can come to this drop-down menu and start to narrow it down based on what your interests are. So let's say you're interested in climate change and environmental issues. You could come to Energy and Environmentalism, and this will give you a list of possible topics. They're still pretty broad, but it's a good starting point. From here, maybe I'm interested in the issue of fracking. So I can click on that topic. And when it takes me to the page about fracking, it will give me a full menu of different types of sources about my topic. So I may be interested in statistics or videos about that topic. I may need some peer-reviewed academic journals or images. But one place that I highly recommend you go is to the category of viewpoints. When you click on viewpoints, you'll notice these sources are opinionated articles about your topic. This is a great place to go for step number two in narrowing down your topic, where you start to look more in depth about what people are discussing, what they're arguing about, what issues within your topic really grab the attention of the community that discusses it. So just by kind of scrolling down under viewpoints, and you can see there's 30 such articles about fracking, I can start to get a sense just from looking at the titles of what people are arguing about. Is fracking a public health risk? Um, how does it affect U.S. oil production, right? That type of thing. So as you go down, a few may catch your attention, and that's a good time to click on the article and read it more fully to get some more details about your topic. You can use these both to grab arguments for your own paper, but also just to get a sense of beyond the general topic of, say, fracking, what specific details do you want to start to investigate? Now, once you've done that, you've started to narrow down your topic. Start to get some background information about those issues. So this is a good time to look at some of the reference articles, which are basic encyclopedia articles that will provide factual information about your topic. Or maybe look at newspaper articles, which will be up-to-date current reporting about the issue. So these, this database, Opposing Viewpoints, will help you to go through those first three steps of identifying a broad topic and then starting to figure out what matters to people, what are they arguing about, what issues, and narrowing it down, might you want to talk about in your research. And then finally getting some background information. Now the last step is to take all this information and all the thinking you've done on your topic to this point and start to ask some critical questions. And I call them critical questions because they're not simple questions like that start with who or what or when or where that you can usually answer in a sentence or two. These questions start, tend to start with words like how or why, where you really have to think and explain the issue, and there's usually more than one answer. Right? Another option might be looking at cause and effect of something. 
sometimes explaining the cause or effect of an event or the cause or an effect of, of certain ideas or certain movements in society can be very complicated and that's a good thing for your research paper because it means there will be a lot to look at and a lot of possible avenues that you can explore to write your paper. One final possible question idea would be to look at the significance or impact of something. So again, we might look at a social movement or a big idea or something that happened in politics like a political event and talk about what's the significance of that? How did it affect history or how did it affect current um, events at the moment? And those are all ways to start to think about your research, not as um, a word or a phrase like fracking or, or climate change or global warming, but start to think of it as a critical question that you're going to answer. So when you receive your research paper assignment, consider using some of these steps to help find and narrow down your topic and make your project a lot more efficient and effective. If you have further questions or need additional assistance, please visit our website and contact a librarian. Thank you.